All right, we're back with our first lightning session speaker. Let me call on my super cool boss, Kailash, here um, to talk about the then and nows of the Nepali tech industry. Welcome, Kailash. Thank you, Vedika. Okay, so as a man who's seen the growth of the Nepali tech industry from you know dial-ups and CDs now to Wi-Fi and USBs, um, where do you think, or how far do you think we've come as a community, and where do you think the Nepali tech industry should venture to next? Hmm. From from CDs, <laughs> more like uh, more like copies. I've um, seen those three point five inches yeah. at one point. Back in school. Oh, okay. You were grown up back then. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, I don't have to worry about my internet bills. Sorry, not internet bills, but telephone bills anymore, right? Uh, things have changed. Like I can see uh, handheld devices, uh, cell phones in almost everyone's hands, right? In the city. And uh, talking about uh, tech industry, like uh, in terms of software and all, uh, back in mid 2000s, things were quite different, right? Yes. Uh, we used to sell uh, e-commerce websites and dynamic websites and desktop applications. Uh, web applications were not something that was very common back then, right? Uh, and then, uh, and slowly, uh, around 2008 or 9, uh, I guess, that was when Nepal Telecom introduced, uh, introduced uh, ADSL, right. right? And then uh, things started changing. Everybody started uh, having uh, broadband internet at their home. And then I, I remember, I remember around mid 2000 when I, when I used to build, when I tried building uh, this uh, web applications. I mean, I used to build desktop applications, but then when I built web applications that uh, was installed on prem on their offices, uh, they used to, you know, tell me like, I don't have fit for seven internet yeah. connection. It, it, it could be very costly for us. Right. And so th things have changed, things have changed, right? Uh, and then slowly in, in, uh, after 2010, uh, the, the market for, uh, for mobile applications started growing, right? And now, um, and now internet, hardware is cheap, right? Yeah. Uh, software is of course expensive. And then digital transformation is, uh, is more, uh, I won't say easy, but uh, compared to accessible, yeah, it's accessible as well as uh, to implement a new system into your organization, into your business. It's much, much easy, easier than what it used to be, right? So I can see uh, many, many business houses uh, installing new software, mm -hmm. uh, trans transforming their business, and then you know collecting more and more data. So the future is uh, not, uh, I won't say future, uh, it's, it's the data, right? Okay. You have to make uh, decisions based on data. Uh, you have to be a, da a data-driven company. Uh -huh. So that's where we should be going, right? Great answer. And you know, you're, you're our boss, you're our CTO. So as an employer, how do you ensure sustainable tech talent here in Nepal for the long haul? <laughs> it's difficult, man, it's difficult. <laughs> It's a difficult question uh, because uh, I think uh, I think the simple answer is two things, right? One, uh, how do we stop people from going abroad for uh, for employment opportunities, mm -hmm. right? Other one is uh, other one would be how do we how do we produce better uh, not engineers better. Uh, better STEM graduates from right out of colleges, right? right. Those are the most uh, two important things uh, in my opinion. And then I think uh, in my, uh, don't quote me on this, but uh, my estimate is around 10,000 STEM graduates a year. Uh -huh. uh, out of 10,000, I don't know, even hard, not even 1,000 of them join software industry or tech industry, right? And then, uh, even at Leapfrog, when we when we hire freshers, we, we evaluate thousands of people, uh, freshers a year, 
and then uh, only a few hundred of them uh, go past interview and then a few hundreds of them join the internship and a couple of hundreds of them uh, join leapfrog right and even after that uh, we we run them through intensive uh, boot camps even after hiring so so from from their selection process to actually contributing to the real world project it takes about five or six months right, right. Uh, so I guess if we can reduce that time and then encourage more people to stay in Nepal, then that's a good sign for, for this industry. Excellent answer. And I believe that comes from experience. Thank you, Kailash. It was fun talking to you about tech talent and where the Nepali tech industry is headed. Thank you, Kritika. We'll be back in five minutes for our next speaker, who is Persha Dotel, talking about how to automate your infrastructure. Until then, stay tuned. <laughs>